You don't want a villain to have that. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Showbiz Pop 5. I'm your host, Whitney Danhauer. I'm Lauren. And if you guys are new here, we are TV writers from Showbiz Cheat Sheet. And since Marvel announced the movies and TV shows for phase five and six at Comic-Con 2022, that is what we were talking about this week. We are talking about five of the most exciting things to come out of that announcement. Yes. And I'm going to start us off. I don't know if we call this exciting, but it's just kind of... It's a thing. It's a thing that's happening. And (laughs) I just want to clear the air because everyone is all up in arms over the fact that there has been rumors and these are not substantiated. They're just rumors that they might be changing the title of X-Men to just mutants or maybe the mutants. But everyone's thinking, oh, you know, I've seen so many people being like, go woke, go broke, all this stuff. And it's not really that because Stan Lee himself originally named, he wanted to call it the mutants. That was his goal, but his publisher said no. So it's not really anything to do with because of it because it's X Men and yes. not okay, which I don't stuff like that does not personally bother me. It it has not ever bothered me personally. Like I I don't take offense to someone calling him the X Men even though they have women involved too. But a lot of people are upset over the fact that they're changing it from X-Men to the mutants because they think it's sort of this progressive political statement to change all these things. And it's, I mean, if they looked into it a little, they'd see that Stan Lee originally wanted to call it the mutants. So the source, the source material. Yeah. You're just mad at its origins there mad over nothing. People love to get mad. Love it. They really do. Love being in 2022. Well, on a happier note, um, I want to talk about why Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is the first movie that's coming out in phase five, because there's a very important reason behind that. So this is the first movie. It's coming out tentatively February 17th, 2023. And I say that, I mean, that seems pretty hard and fast, but Mm -hmm. like things, things can change. Okay. This is the first movie because it's going to introduce the big bad that's going to pop up throughout the movies and TV shows in phase five, Kang the Conqueror. So this, if you're a Marvel fan, you know who Kang the Conqueror is. And Kevin Feige said that he's going to be completely different from Thanos. The only thing that they have in common is they're both purple villains, (laughs) but he's going to have just as evil of an approach but like be completely different and that's all Kevin Feige said take that how you want it I'm excited I am too because I believe they're bringing back Jonathan is it Jonathan Mars who plays King Kong King 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 Kong different King King (laughs) (laughs) plays King in Loki correct yes Yes. And he is excellent. I love him. He was a Lovecraft country, Mm -hmm. love actor. So I'm really excited to see what else he can do. And I loved him in Loki too. So I'm excited to see what he does in the movie with Paul Rudd. I'm also excited to see how he pops up in all the other stories in phase five. Oh yeah. Not on, not that he's going to be in all of them, but in the ways that he will pop up. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I, I feel like I might be only harping on (laughs) Stuff people are mad about. <laughs> they want a marble. <laughs> We're out of the Comic Con in San Diego, San Diego Comic Con. Uh, but people are upset that, and they're calling, some people are calling for a boycott of the new series, Wakanda Forever, because apparently it's alluded to that Chadwick Bozeman's character, T'Challa, is going to be killed off and they're not going to recast him as another, with another Black actor. And this has upset a lot of people because they make a good point that they, they would never stop casting, recasting Spider-Man, you know, if Tom Holland passed away, God forbid, but they would keep going. So I don't understand their move to, to change this because he doesn't die in the comics mm-hmm. at this point. Now, further down the line, I'm not that familiar with the actual comics when it comes to Black Panther, but people are tweeting that, you know, they're just, they feel like this is very exploitive to Chadwick Boseman's death because they're kind of, Marvel's kind of playing off his real life death and using it. Capitalizing on it. Yeah. And it does seem, it seems kind of, I don't like it. 
see that strikes me because everything the footage that i've seen that came out of comic-con the cast and crew involved in it had nothing but like i mean obviously they're gonna have nothing but good things to say about it but they were all crying on stage when they premiered the trailer or the teaser whatever it was and they all i don't know they were all like at peace with it they felt comfortable with it they were like what a beautiful way to honor chadwick Mm -hmm. so i'm just confused about where that disconnect is i mean i get i get what people are saying and why they would be saying it but why would why would they being the cast and crew do something like that like that feels I don't understand disconnect. Their, I don't understand their reasoning either because it's I don't think it would be any sort of disservice or you know kind of a what's the word I'm looking for it's not anything against I think Chadwick like a slight yeah I don't think it's a slight against Chadwick Boseman to recast it I think he would want the character to live, to live on. on yeah and maybe that's what they're maybe that's what they're doing maybe you know, maybe they're just making it, it seem like they're gonna Kill the I, hope so. I, I really hope so because that is kind of disingenuous to say well this is just to to honor Chadwick Boseman when yeah. really I'm pretty sure he would imagine if he played the character long enough and then he couldn't play you know he you know yeah. got too old to play it he would pass the torch yeah make it make sense Marvel yes make come on Marvel sense. get it together <laughs> anyway Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, tentatively so scheduled for May 5th, 2023. Okay. So excited. Big month. I, I can't wait. Those, I just, I'm mostly excited about the soundtrack, for being honest. True. But this was another emotional moment that came out of Comic-Con 2022 because um, the, they used the Flaming Lips song, Do You Realize? Are you familiar with the Flaming Lips? I used to love the Flaming Lips. It's, right. I, it's not a sad song. It's one of their slower ones. But anyway, that's featured. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know what yeah. you're talking about. Yes. That's in the trailer that they aired at Comic-Con. Um, and it's playing in the background as Star Lord is having a conversation with Gamora, but she doesn't she doesn't know who he is because this is a variant of Gamora. She died in Infinity War, the one that he was in love with. Okay? Yes. So now he's having this conversation with a variant Gamora, and it's it's striking because it's he's, you know, he's putting his heart on the line and she's like I don't know you sir she's like the Mariah Carey meme I don't know her (laughs) I don't know her so I'm excited to see how that plays out because James Gunn said that Star-Lord dealing with that loss is going to be a big catalyst in this volume three I also think there's going to be another significant death in this movie people on TikTok I've heard rumblings but yeah man they both which I'm not ready for but no one and two upset me even though, even though Groot comes back, it's still upsetting. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. Groot is, there's a significant time jump in this one because Groot in L- Thor Love and Thunder is like mm-hmm. teenage Groot. Mm-hmm. And this Groot that appears in volume three is like full on tree, ripped, ripped to the gills, like ready to fight. How is a tree ripped? I, I You know what I mean though? Like you <laughs> had the visual. When I said this tree is ripped, you were like, I know exactly what you're talking about. I get it. I get it. Yeah, uh, that, I I don't know. I don't want any more. I'm somebody that doesn't like anyone to die, any of the characters to die in any movie. So I'm not a good, not a good barometer of of whether or not it's good. Because even if it's, it makes it a good story and it makes the characters feel like they're worth, like their motives are worth something or whatever. Well, it makes the audience too feel something. I feel like a lot of, that's why a lot of, I mean, I don't want I watch Marvel movies I want to feel (laughs) I don't I don't want to feel anything but joy and happiness I don't want to ever be sad (sighs) well but tacking on to your Guardians of the Galaxy 3 we also learned at San Diego Comic-Con that they have cast none other than Will Poulter as I almost said Black Adam but that's DC (laughs) Adam Warlock (laughs) And Black Adam. And that's Dwayne the Rock drops. <laughs> and that is <laughs> The Rock playing Black Adam. Will Poulter is playing Adam Warlock. And admittedly, didn't know a lot about this character before we started diving into stuff for this episode. But I learned that Adam Warlock comes from a cocoon, which really bothers me. It makes me kind of sick. Like what is what's happening inside the cocoon? 
it feels very alien to me and if you know anything about me you know I'm like fascinated by aliens so but I'm like here for it are his muscles and everything coming together inside the cocoon as long as I don't have to see that I don't know I but mean think about it and it makes me kind of sick <laughs> makes me a little queasy okay if you are also not that familiar with Adam Warlock His superpowers include superhuman agility, superhuman stamina, telepathy, energy manipulation, and a healing factor. That seems not great. A lot? uh, I mean, well, especially a villain. You don't want a villain to have that. Hold on. I didn't think he was a villain. Oh, is he not a villain? I don't know. I don't know. Just talking about if you're not familiar with with okay. Black Adam. <laughs> okay. If you're not familiar with Black I- Sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Adam Warlock, he these are his powers. He has superhuman agility, superhuman stamina, telepathy, energy manipulation, and a healing factor, which as I was reading up on him, he can die a whole bunch and then he just re-encases himself in a cocoon and comes back stronger. A useful tool. Yeah, I get, I mean, I wish I had a cocoon whenever I was having a bad day. Just <laughs> don't bother me till tomorrow. Little pod. Yeah, <laughs> wrap myself up. Uh, he has a bit of a, a rocky, you know, start, but eventually he's a good guy. So he's fighting for the good of the planet. So whether or not- classic storyline we love a tortured superhero all right guys that does it for this week we had five big moments big things that came out of san diego comic-con if you want to know more you can always go to cheat sheet.com we have several articles based around everything marvel so just read until your heart's content as always if you have any comments questions or you want to call us out for getting something wrong by accident you can leave comments in the boxes <laughs> down below but be nice if we said something wrong. Otherwise, you can follow us on social media. We are at Cheat Sheet on Twitter and at Showbiz Cheat Sheet on both Facebook and Instagram. So I want to thank everybody for watching and I hope you tune in next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. Later, guys. Bye.